He was a big boy with a big personality, and there's a big hole in our lives. And I will not have that happen to another family if I can do anything about it. And that's why we're all here tonight. We're blessed to be here in this community. We were blessed to have 16 years of a big-footed, granite black. Most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just want y'all to know that just because you've got good kids, just because they've got their hearts right, they're good brothers, good whatever, good sisters, it doesn't mean that they're always going to make good decisions. Blake made a stupid decision. That's all there is to it. It cost us our son. It cost Aaron and his brother. It cost y'all your friends. It cost this community a future leader. And I do mean that. If any of you knew him well enough to know of his integrity, his plans, his dreams, his desires, his love, you know the loss. And as long as I'm your own breath, I'm going to be fighting for this to not ever happen again. And I have been joined by a family that is what it is. By the angels that have been at my house, that have fed me, my family, that have prayed for me, my family, that have held us up. And that will forever tell me Blake's stories and make me laugh. He's gone. And you kids listen close. If you so, Dr. Montgomery, Mike Lamb, Huntsville Independent School District, Gregory Independent School District, and Jane Ferris, Richard Dunn, don't do it. And here's why. Before September 27, 2005. And that date sticks with me because on that day I was teaching seventh grade dare talks and I had a kid ask me about California children. And I looked and said, What are you talking about? And, he, and I told him, Well, that's stupid. It's dangerous. Don't do it. Thought that he'd seen it on TV or somewhere or heard about it somewhere, but thought it was that afternoon. I was at my daughter's field hockey game, seventh grade, same school. And a couple of the eighth grade moms who know me came over to me and asked me when I was going to talk to the eighth grade. And I said, well, eighth grade doesn't get any dare talks. They got their last lesson in seventh grade. Well, we want you to talk to them. I said, what's going on? And they told me, I finished and one of my biggest fears during that six weeks of putting it together and getting the approvals through the school board. You know, dealing with all that political mess that goes along with it. My biggest fear was that we were going to lose a kid during that six weeks. That's how serious I was that quickly. And I finished life and realized it's not too much. We have to address it. Shortly thereafter, I was doing presentations. Again, I never thought this was going to take off. Guys at work said, oh, this is where we're going to take off. So, no, it's not. I'll do a column and make a mistake. And that's why I think education is so important. So I put this presentation together, and the presentation gave me these off the kids. And I told them I have to because that's what the kids know it as. That's what they're familiar with. No, I don't think it's a game. But if I started off saying, we're going to talk about asphyxiation play, they're going to say, huh? And they'll never link it to the choking game. As painful as this presentation may be for you, it's nothing compared to the pain and the standard. Because our kids are making a mistake. They're making a bad choice because they don't have the answers they need. And we know posters and the You know every episode by heart. He was so funny and so much fun to be around. On the morning of August 23rd, two Steve can't be here tonight because Steve made a mistake. And how many times have we told our kids, learn from your mistakes? They have to learn and realize they can't afford to make this mistake. They can take the death of Steve, Blake, Micah as a gift in order to not make that mistake. I'd like to share a poem with you now written by another mother who lost her son Jason to this deadly activity. And he likes, and he did this life. 
And I ask you to think and imagine. And really, I rubbed your arms and held each hand. My fingers made a futile track to your feet. I pulled the blanket to your chin, a last attempt to tuck you in. I wanted so to comfort you, was not meant to be. It's not just your body I will miss, it's your touch and voice, and always ready on the go to ride four wheelers, play in snow, boating and camping with your dad, and dreading schoolwork oh so bad. The hurt that is the worst for me is what your life will never be. The world was yours that should have been. I would not wish the death of a child on anyone. I would certainly not wish the grief of someone thinking that their child had committed suicide and what they could have done differently when it was not suicide at all. I was um, preparing to speak at the service of the celebration of Blake's life and I opened the Bible and right there underlined and circled from sometime before was the passage from Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 and it said my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Well, we're here to give you knowledge. And now we're reading Proverbs 9. And Proverbs 9, verse 9 says, You give a wise man instruction, and he will. And for us, wiser, bolder, and speak the truth. We have an enemy that we're fighting. <laughs> Kids have to realize that, again, we have to give them the education they need to make a choice because, like it or not, as adults, it's their choice. We have to empower them to make the right choice. Give them the knowledge. One parent had called in when I was on a talk show, played, what's going to happen? And they need to know that if that game involves breath play or somebody touching their chest or neck, the answer has to be no. They have doesn't mean a girl is safe and a boy is not. It's just the same deadly activity for both. Could state your name again? Uh, Bill Pitts. Can you spell your last name for me? P I T T S. Bill, explain what you saw today. Well, it's a pretty shocking uh, information. I, I'm pretty familiar with this because I've looked at it after we found out about Blake and uh, been on on the internet and did a little research and saw that there's a lot of information out there. But when you start seeing some of these pictures of these kids, it just looks so normal. It's it really does hit hit home. And what would you tell parents of, of children this age? Well, it looks like we just need to talk to them about it. I, mean, I think that's what this presentation is all about, is, um, is get the word out. And I think uh, course, what they put on tonight uh, shows that, and I think Charlene and Sand, they can get it out to, to the community and, and beyond. What has Blake's death done to this community? What, is it, I, what does it signify? It's, it's just unbelievable. I'm, I, just still can't believe it. I, I knew Blake real well and um, catch myself just still don't believe it happened. It was two months ago and it seems like it was a long time ago, but uh, or just yesterday. It's hard to hard to describe actually. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Name your name, first and last name. Carrie Berry. Could you spell your first and last name for me? K-E-R-R-Y, B-E-R-R-Y. And explain to me what you saw today. What happened? This was a very powerful presentation and extremely informative. Um, the few details of the facts of, of this um, choking game that they call that I've been aware of um, are so minimal compared to what was actually presented today. It was very informative for me as an adult and as a parent. And what did you know about the choking game prior to today? I was aware of it only through the death of Blake Sandal. I had never heard of the choking game before, um, and so I've been educated on bits and pieces of it um, after the death of Blake. Uh, but after today, it's uh, understanding the physiological effects that it has on a body, um, the addictive the, the addictiveness of it and how it's impacting children as young as first grade all the way up to adulthood. And what would you say to parents today who have children? Number one, educate yourself on what is going on. Go to gaspinfo.com and get all the information you can on it and then educate your kids, educate your friends and ev everybody that has contact with children so that they can hopefully help to save another life. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, y'all's last name? Sandal, S as in Sam, A-N-D-E-L. And tell me what we're out here doing today. Well, uh, we have uh, Scott Matheny uh, from Pennsylvania, who is a D.A.R.E. police officer, and his uh, mission and ours is to educate kids and parents about the dangers of the deadly choking game. Uh, we lost our son Blake on March 7th uh, to the, to the uh, game. It's uh, self-asphyxia, asphyxia, play, breath, play. There's all kinds of names for it. And uh, it's uh, critical that we get it out there that this is not a game. It's a killer. Uh, it's all over. The parents are beginning to learn about it the kids know about it. And if your kids haven't done it, they probably know someone who has. One, one of our goals uh, also is to uh, uh, inform the, I guess the political community that uh, this is a serious problem. Uh, uh, there's no funding for education or anything like that because it's not uh, currently being coded uh, as the choking game or whatever. It's either uh, suicide or, or, or undetermined uh, self uh, accidental death or something like that and uh, you know without without funding you can't have education ongoing education uh, to, to keep uh, educating kids about the dangers of this game we have well, I'm sorry I'm sorry to interrupt you what would you what would be one thing you would tell parents if you had to tell them one thing about this this game that's taken the life of so many talk to your kids take it to them be bold don't be afraid, don't be scared, don't be shy, don't beat around the bush. You have to be truthful, you have to be up front, you, you cannot be afraid and water it down. Um, and again, that's why the education is so important in the schools. Um, that is why it is so important to get the coding correct so that when, it, when God forbid, a child's body reaches the medical examiner's office, it is recognized as asphyxiation play or the choking game and not ruled as suicide. That is the second point in our mission is because you've got these parents out here that think their kids have committed suicide and it is not suicide. They made a bad choice. It was their choice. It was a stupid decision. They had no idea what the risk were. We have to educate them about the risk. We have to get the coding right so that they will know the numbers will, the statistics will be correct so that when you can look at the deaths, the teen deaths in Texas in the year 2006, you will see that we've had this number of kids that actually died from suicide and this number of kids that died from this asphyxiation play. Um, also, there's been uh, more deaths in Walker County in the last two years from the choking game than there has been from drugs. We've had no, no drug overdoses in Walker County. In, in, like, among teenagers. Among teenagers. Yeah. Uh, and the, the thing, the point that we want to drive home is this is not a game. The kids refer to it as the choking game. It is not a game. It is a killer. Okay, there we go. Thank you all so much.
Can you spell your first and last name for me? S-C-O-T-T-M-E-T-H-E-N-Y, Scott Matheny. And Mr. Matheny, what are you here doing? I'm here presenting a presentation on the choking game, which is a deadly activity kids are doing where essentially they're depriving the brain of oxygen to get a rush, they can get to safe activity. And what are we here telling parents? What are we educating here? We're letting them know exactly what it is and the fact that it's not just kids being kids, that it's actually um, the physical effects that happens and the brain cells dying off from lack of oxygen and letting the parents know that they need to be aware of it because the kids are aware of it. And if they're not, their friends are. And what would you say if you had to give one message to the parents, to parents that don't know about it, what would you tell them? Um, they can go to our website. Um, I'm part of an association called GASP, Games I Lesson Shouldn't Play. They can look at a presentation there. And the main thing is they have to communicate with their kids. They have to talk with them and let them know. They have to give me information on this because I always say that you wouldn't send a kid to school to take a test on something they never heard of because they're going to fail. Well, how can we send them out in the real world when their friends are going to test them on this? Because if they fail, they won't be around tomorrow. And what kind of reactions are you getting as you travel to do these presentations? Actually, both. What kind of reaction are we getting? Well, shock from the parents to realize that what is going on and what is really happening. And also shock from the kids. When the kids see that this isn't just a fun activity, it's, it is a killing activity. Um, the, the damage that can happen to the brain even the first time they do it, um, it's very shocking for them. It's a very emotional presentation because we're talking about kids dying. But they need to realize that is what happens when people do this. Thank you so much. All right.